when it comes to replacing your bearings, you typically have two options. The first option involves going to your original equipment manufacturer. You go to the service department or parts department and say, I need two rear axle bearings for my Suzuki V-Strom 650 year 2007, or I need uh, for my Bosch angle grinder model number such and such, I need part number 27, if you looked it up. Or just describe what it is. The benefit of this is that it's convenient service for you. A disadvantage of this is that the equipment tool or equipment manufacturer typically charge you extra for the bearings. The reason for this is that they don't make the bearings. Just as they don't make uh, tires for your vehicle or rubber for your uh, windshield wiper or glass for your windshield. An option B, a second option therefore, is going directly to the source. Going to a bearing distributor who typically carry several bearing manufacturers products. The benefit of this is that often you get better service because the uh, technicians there will ask you questions, well how did the original bearing fail? Was it due to water ingression? Was it due to high heat? Was it due to uh, high speed of rotation? And they might recommend you different bearings that are of identical size but are constructed differently internally that uh, might be better suited for your particular uh, specific needs and application and uh, uh, might help you prevent uh, whatever caused the uh, premature failure on the original bearing. A disadvantage of going to a bearing distributor is that they don't have one single clue about your vehicle or about your Bosch angle grinder. For these guys you're going to need to show a bearing designation number. And in this video, I'll show you how to find or determine your bearing numbers or bearing designation numbers. It's not rocket science. You need to take just three simple measurements. And uh, you can go with those numbers uh, to a bearing distributor. Those three measurements are inside diameter, or uh, also known as bore, outside diameter of a bearing and thickness. Now this procedure applies to both metric and imperial bearings and uh, will work for deep groove ball bearings, that the, the kind of bearings that you typically find in your tools and equipment at home, but also works with needle bearings and, uh, and other special uh, other kinds of bearings as well. It's the same procedure. Three measurements. Very simple. Before you do any measurements, sometimes you can see the bearing number printed on the bearing itself. Let me see this one. Uh, okay, on this one, on this side, there's nothing anywhere. On the other side of it, you can see a manufacturer's name, SMT, printed on it. On an identical bearing, still nothing on that side and there on the inner race you can see 6010 there's your bearing designation number bingo you don't need to do anything else you just take that number that four digit number uh, that's your bearing designation number don't need to measure anything you just ask at your uh, bearing distributor a replacement uh, 6010 bearing or 6010 bearing here from my V-Strom this collapsed front axle bearing it doesn't have anything on it and uh, bearings come with uh, other numbers as well so there's your four digit number that's industry standardized and governed it's it's an industrial standard that that uh, that covers uh, what those numbers should mean and how they should be listed everything else is uh, manufacturer bearing manufacturer dependent. So uh, this particular manufacturer uh, means uh, different things by the letter W and another one might mean different things by the letter W. Don't have to worry much about those at this point because all you need is that bearing designation number. Typically it's four digits 
and if it's uh, if it's got steel balls, hardened steel balls as the rolling element inside the bearing, then it's going to start with a digit six, typically. Sometimes you only have three digits for special super small bearings or maybe five digits, but most often it's four digits. And the rest of the numbers mean uh, different uh, prefixes, uh, different things, uh, may mean different uh, lubricants that the bearing is packed in the first place when it was manufactured, uh, different clearances on uh, how much internal uh, play the bearing has, uh, what kind of cage design the bearing has, uh, or what kind of seal the bearing comes with. <coughs> so, if you look on the bearing, and you can't find a bearing designation number printed on it, stamped into it anywhere, like on this one, you're going to have to measure. And uh, it's very simple. Switch on your measuring device there, and measure the inside. It says 16.86. I'm going to write down 17 millimeters, and I'll show you why. It's a strange rounding, and, uh, and uh, I'll show you uh, in a sec what the reason is for uh, this kind of inaccuracy that I'm doing here. I'm just going to write down 17. And the next measurement is, is 40. It's pretty good. So this one is 40 there. And for thickness, just pick a spot anywhere. I'm going to write down 12. Okay, I'm just going to round it to 12. 12 millimeters. So this bearing is a 17 by 40 by 12. At this point, uh, you're done. You can take it to your uh, bearing distributor and they can find your bearing that's exactly this size. Uh, if you want, you can look it up in a catalog, just like this, and uh, you will find your bearing designation in this catalog. And this is, this is how and this is why. Let me just see, how does it work for you so you can see what I'm doing. There. It says principal, no, principal dimensions, and I penciled in ID, OD, and width there, because that lowercase d, uppercase d, and uppercase b relate to a picture on the other side, which is inside diameter, outside diameter, and thickness. So you can see that a bearing's internal diameter in metric bearings is either 15 millimeters. And the next one is 17. There's nothing in between. So that's why when it was when I was measuring 16.8 or whatever it was, don't worry about it. It's a 17 millimeter internal uh, diameter or 17 millimeter bore for the bearing. Next measurement was what was it? 17 by 40 by 12. So there is 17, and we're gonna go for a 40. There is three pieces of 40 there, so that's 17 by 40, and two of them have a width or thickness of 12 millimeters. 17 by 40 by 12, and if you follow the rows all the way see, to the end, you will find, on there, you will find those bearing designations, 6203 or 6203 E, D, N, 9. Those are your bearing designation numbers. And this, again, applies across the board. It's an industry standard, and all bearing manufacturers use this designation number. Not just uh, the one from whom catalog I uh, copied this page out. The difference between uh, 62, let me just see, how do I do this? The difference between 6203 and 6203 ETN9 is on the previous page where uh, TN uh, refers to cage design and it says polyamide cage. So that means it's a plastic cage so uh, it won't rust on me like the first, like the original one did. It, it, it rusted out and, uh, and failed and collapsed there and there's TN9 so if I go 
there it says TN9 it's a fiberglass reinforced polyamid uh, cage inside so it's a uh, stiffer than a polyamid cage that's typically a good thing because you want as little flex as little internal flex on wheel bearings as possible uh, you want your wheels uh, stiff and sticking to the road so 620 just a sec I dropped the paper where the bearing designation is All right, that one 6203 or 6203 ETN9. I didn't find uh, what uh, E stands for, but I'm sure you can ask the uh, service guys at, uh, at your neighborhood bearing distributor. So that's how to uh, determine your bearing designation number. And that's the number that either the original physical measurements that you can take, your, take to your uh, bearing distributor or this number they will work with either of these and uh, these are the kind of uh, differences that uh, that they might be able to uh, point out to you and uh, recommend you a better bearing that uh, doesn't fail spectacularly like this one